the cutest little matcha bread turtles ever. Hello everyone, first thing we're going to do is make something called tangzong and this is an Asian baking technique where you actually make a roux with flour and milk that you're going to add to your bread. So that's a quarter cup of water, quarter cup of milk and three tablespoons of all-purpose flour and as soon as I whisked that together and it was nice and smooth, I turned the heat on to medium and then just stirred it continuously over medium heat until it starts to thicken up. And this is gonna happen very quickly. Your mixture will not come to the boil. This will get thick before it gets to the boiling stage. And as you see, as it starts to thicken up, your whisk will start to make tracks. So if you can do this with your whisk and make tracks across the roux, that mixture, then it's done. Take it off the heat and let it come to room temperature. Now for the bread, we're gonna start off with four and a half tablespoons of milk that I've warmed up in the microwave so it's warm to the touch. I'm adding two teaspoons of instant active dry yeast and I'm just whisking it in with a fork just to let it dissolve a little bit in the milk. It may not completely dissolve, you might have some pieces floating, but just stir it until it's mostly dissolved. Then that is the tang zong that's been cooled to room temperature and I put it into a bigger bowl. To this add one beaten egg, a teaspoon of vanilla extract, that milk and yeast mixture. And then you're gonna whisk that together until it's smooth and the tang zong will have kind of firmed up a little bit, maybe a little bit clumpy, but if you whisk it well enough, it'll be nice and smooth. And then you're gonna whisk in two tablespoons of melted butter. So once that's nicely combined, you're gonna set that aside. Now we're gonna do the dry ingredients in a large bowl. I'm using my stand mixer. That's one and two third cups of all purpose flour, half a cup of sugar, a teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of milk powder, and then four teaspoons of green tea powder, also called matcha. And I'm just gonna stir that together just to make sure that there are no clumps of green tea because it has a tendency to clump up a little bit. Then you're gonna pour in the liquid ingredients all at once into the bowl. And this is where the stand mixer comes in really handy. You put that bread hook on the mixer and then just let it mix for 10 minutes. There it is after 10 minutes. Um, this is a really, really sticky dough. Um, it doesn't make a ball, as you can see, and I uh, had a hard time getting it out of the bowl. It's super sticky. Now, the recipe describes it, that your dough should be uh, smooth and elastic, and this is just super sticky and not very elastic at all. So I put some flour on the countertop, and then I just kneaded it a few times, kneaded a little bit more flour in, until I still had a sticky dough, but it was a little bit easier to work with, and it... Um, felt like it had a little bit of elasticity. It's okay if it's still sticky though. So there's the ball and you see I press down on it. It does bounce back a little bit. And uh, I put this dough ball into a greased bowl, covered it with some plastic wrap and I put it in a warm place to rise. I put it in my oven with just the oven light on for one and a half hours. After the hour and a half, the dough will rise to almost double. Mine didn't quite double. You're gonna take it out of the bowl and put it on the countertop. And now you need to divide this into eight equal pieces. So I just kind of roughly divided it with a knife into eight pieces. And then I used my kitchen scale to make sure that they were relatively equal. So I weighed that whole dough ball first. I divided that number by eight and that's how I that's how I came to what each dough ball should weigh. I just used my little kitchen scale and it just made sure they were about the same weight. If they're, if they're a, a gram or two off, it's not a big deal. Just so that they're roughly the same weight. So if you have a really big one, take a piece off, put it on a small one until they're all relatively even. Now you'll need six of those dough balls for the turtle bodies and the other two will be used for the heads and the feet. So we're gonna make the bodies now. Take one of those dough balls, Flatten it out into until it's about four or five inches in diameter. 
or about 11 centimeters or so. And then you're going to place a heaping tablespoon of chocolate chips in the center or chopped chocolate. The original recipe asks for white chocolate. I didn't have any and matcha goes quite well with, with dark chocolate as well. So I decided to use a dark chocolate. So I kind of pushed the chocolate chips so that they were kind of in good contact with the dough. And then I folded the edges up inward and pressed down so that it's sealed. And once it was nicely sealed, and it's easy to do because the dough is kind of sticky, turn it over, put the seam side down, and just make sure it's nice and round. Then you're gonna take each of the little turtle bodies and you're gonna place them on a cookie sheet, either covered with a silicone mat like I'm using, or uh, with parchment paper. So you'll have six little bodies and you should have two dough balls left. Take one of those dough balls and you're going to divide this into six pieces. These are going to be the head pieces for the turtle. So once again, you know, you just, I just eyeballed it. I, when I cut them up, you can weigh them so that they're, you know, they're all pretty much exactly the same size, but that's not really necessary. Eyeballing it will work. Then take each piece and roll it into a nice little ball shape. They're nice and smooth. Then take each little head shape and you're going to pinch a piece so that it makes like a little tab or in this case a little neck I guess a little thin piece like a tab lift the body up put the head down and the body's going to rest on top of that little tab and that's just going to make sure that the two pieces stay stuck together on the cookie sheet and do that six times now we're going to do the turtle legs and tail so each turtle has four legs and one tail five pieces per turtle you need 30 pieces so that final dough ball you're going to divide into 30. what i did is i divided it into three and then each of those pieces i cut up into 10 more or less equal pieces ended up with 30 of them this is probably the longest part of the whole process then take each of those little pieces you're going to do the same technique roll it into a ball make a little tab and then lift up the body and you're going to place that little tab underneath the turtle and do that for all the turtles so they all have front legs back legs and a tail now for the eyes i'm using black sesame seeds you could use poppy seeds or chia seeds whatever you'd like you kind of just press them on to the turtle or where you want the eyes to be and then you're going to take a toothpick and just press them lightly into the dough. You want them to stick nicely, so press them in. You don't want to press them in really deeply, but deep enough so that it makes like a little indentation. And there you go. I'm gonna cover this with some plastic wrap that I have just lightly sprayed with cooking spray. And you're gonna put this in a warm place to rise for 30 minutes. As soon as you put these in the warm place to rise, I put mine in my oven with just the oven light on. You're going to make the stuff that we're going to make for the turtle shells. This is called uh, Dutch Crunch for some reason. I don't know why. The Dutch Crunch is a quarter cup of warm water. To that, we're going to add a teaspoon and a half of active dry yeast. You're going to stir that around until the yeast is dissolved into the water. Then in a larger bowl, place one third of a cup of white rice flour, not the mochiko sticky sweet flour, the regular white rice flour, one tablespoon of unsweetened cocoa powder, a tablespoon of white sugar, and a half a teaspoon of salt. And then you're just going to whisk that together. I just used a fork. I just wanted to make sure that there were no big lumps of cocoa because cocoa does kind of get lumpy when it sits for a bit. Then I added in the yeast and water, as well as one and a half teaspoons of vegetable oil. You could use olive oil or avocado oil. And then I just stirred it together. I switched to a spoon here because it's going to be a bit easier. You're just going to stir it up until it's combined. Cover it with plastic wrap and you're going to put it in the same place as where your little turtles are rising. So by the time I made this, it took like five minutes. Um, so I let it rise with the turtles, same spot, covered for about 25 minutes or so. And there are the turtles. After they've risen for 30 minutes, they do puff up a little bit while they're rising. And then I took that Dutch crunch mixture. It puffs up a bit, but not very much. It has kind of the texture of frosting is what it kind of feels like. 
I put it in a Ziploc bag. You can just use a spoon if you want, but I wanted to get a nice clean circle on top of the turtle. So what I did was, is I went around and I just put like a minimum amount on each one so that each turtle had some. And then I, whatever I had left, I just added it to them so that each one had about equal amounts. And then I took a spoon and I just smoothed it out just slightly so that it looked, looked nice and neat. And then I sprinkled a little bit of white sugar on top of each turtle, about a half a teaspoon's worth. And then I baked these at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, I took the turtles off the cookie sheet, put them on a rack to cool for 15. And I'm just gonna show you what they look like. You can see how that chocolate Dutch crunch or whatever they call it, crackles as it bakes. So it looks just like a turtle shell, it's so cool. So here's one, I'm gonna show you what it looks like inside. These are best eaten when they're still warm out of the oven. So take them out, let them cool for about 15 minutes and dig in. So as you can see, it's quite, it's like a little bun, it's bread-like and it has a little chocolate center under the shell. Absolutely delicious. That chocolate crunch stuff, you can see it's, it's quite crumbly and it kind of flakes off if you, if you touch it. So it's not really crunchy, but it's kind of a crumbly texture to it. And there they are. These have a very subtle but noticeable matcha tea flavor to them. The chocolate inside the bun is so good. The buns themselves are a very, very soft. And I think that's because we used that Tang Zong Rupee stuff at the beginning. These are really good. It only makes six, which is a nice size. Uh, they're best eaten warm out of the oven. And if you eat them the next day, you just have to reheat them in the microwave just for a few seconds. I have a whole playlist full of fun breads, including puppy buns. I have bunny buns. I have mummies. I have all sorts of great fun bread for you to try. If you want to see this, go ahead and click on the playlist. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.